Do you know that some of Picasso's work was inspired by African art? Hello everyone, my name is Gabriella and you're welcome to the Sankofa Pan Africa series. Today we're going to be looking at Africa's influence on modern art. Now what is African art? African art describes the modern and historical paintings, sculptures, installations and other visual culture from continental Africans and the African continent. Now this may also include the art of African diasporas like African American, Caribbean or art in South American societies inspired by African traditions. African art is so beautiful and unique. It employs various media including pottery, rock art, textiles, masks, personal decoration and jewelry. African art gets a lot of its influence from traditional African religions. In the past, many pieces of art were created for spiritual rather than creative purposes. A lot of African cultures emphasize the importance of ancestors as intermediaries between the living gods and the supreme creator and art was sometimes seen as a way to connect these spirits of ancestors. Seeing that African art gets a lot of its influence from religion, the arrival of both Christianity and Islam have greatly influenced the art of the African continent and the traditions of both have been integrated within the beliefs and the artwork of the continent. There's a lot of fascination with African art because of its unique features and designs that reflect the rich and diverse culture and history of different African tribes and places. So um, these unique features include stylized realism. When you look at different pieces of African art, you notice that they may resemble human figure or sometimes combine humans and animals. However, they are not depicted realistically but with stylized designs. For instance, dolls may look like human beings with disproportionate body parts. Another beautiful feature of African art is dynamic form. Elongated necks, enlarged heads and arms, pointed breasts and the like are often found in human forms which are frequently the subject of African art. These are examples of the notable dynamic forms in this art representing vitality, power and boldness of humanity. Attention to details is another excellent quality of African art. You will discover how African art exhibits fine craftsmanship with elaborate details done obviously with precision and skill. Indeed, these things are the ones that also contribute to the distinct quality of the artworks. Another key feature is geometric figure. There are plenty of African art pieces that show geometric themes, figures and patterns. In a mask, for example, you can see a recurrence of ovals, circles and curves that work together to make the overall effect more striking and unified. Youthful appearance is probably one of the most outstanding qualities of African art. Part of African culture is the emphasis on health, vitality, physical strength and youthfulness. This is why a lot of human figures shouldn't the art display youthfulness. This can be traced back to ancient times where many Africans lived off the land and had to rely on their strength to hunt, build and perform other duties. Art was of incredible importance in pre-colonial Africa. One of the major significances was during religious rituals. Now, religious rituals were a key part in a lot of African cultures and the use of sculptures featured prominently in religious rites. The masks and figures used in such rites were not worshipped, rather it was believed that the world was inhabited by many unseen spirits, each with its own past and personality. These spirits involved themselves in the lives of human beings in many ways for both good and evil. The figures or masks were the vehicles through which these spirits made themselves seen and their presence known in the world of men. The objects themselves, however, did not embody or contain the spirits and even though they were respected and honored, they were not worshipped. Art was also used for authority and social control. Masks representing spirit forces were particularly important at ceremonies, marking the major changes in the lives of individuals or community events such as initiations into adulthood or funeral ceremonies. At the initiation ceremonies, the masks frequently led the boys into the bush schools where initiations took place. 
At funerals, the mass not only paid for that respect to the, to the deceased, but also guaranteed safe passage into the world beyond. Sculpture also served to symbolize authority and play important roles in maintaining social control. Figurative staffs were sometimes carried by representatives of chiefs and kings, symbolizing their power and authority. Often they spoke for him and represented him through visual proverbs as having the power, strength and courage of such creatures as a leopard, water buffalo or elephant. Sometimes it was deemed advisable to call upon the spirits to settle disputes too intractable to be settled by normal temple authorities. In such cases, the spirits were thought to make themselves known through masks, and the decisions announced by the masks were accepted as having the weight of spiritual authority. Masks also maintained social control in more subtle ways. Often they served as teaching aids, augmenting the authority of the teacher himself and by symbolizing the ideas or values he wished to teach. While masks were always treated seriously, the appearance itself might be accompanied by great merriment and humor was often built into their teaching roles. Thus, chiefs and elders might be criticized for pompousness or abuse of authority through seemingly comic ridicule and caricature by a mask. In similar vein, a mask might deliberately act in ways not normally tolerated in the society in order to teach by negative example. In this sense, even what might appear to be pure entertainment often had a more serious purpose. Art was also symbolic. Utilitarian objects such as weaving pulleys, bowls, stools, chairs and textiles were also made with great care to beautify daily life as well as to enhance the status of chiefs and prominent persons. In each case, the particular culture created its own set of symbols and artistic style which were understood in the community. Those symbols varied widely between one community and the next. There was generally within a given community a considerable degree of consistency and thus developed a large number of reasonably discrete styles. Though artists did not follow stylistic guidelines blindly, and each added his or her own creativity and individuality to the objects they made. The artists generally worked with the, within defined parameters of acceptability within the culture. With all of these, artists were thereby able to reinforce the traditional beliefs and values of men's societies and political leaders who were their patrons. Perhaps because African masks were carved to be worn in performance and most figurative sculptures were also designed for ritual use, African art was principally symbolic rather than representational. It was more concerned with visualizing concepts rather than actually accurately representing nature. Unfortunately, a lot of these art pieces that connect to our history and culture isn't even on the continent anymore. Europeans, after imposing foreign rule over most of Africa, took much of its history and art with them, which today are displayed in foreign museums all around the globe. These museums offer the best glimpse into Africa's times before the arrival of colonialists. For example, the Sainsbury African Galleries in the British Museum in London display 600 objects from the largest permanent collection of African arts and culture in the world. The three permanent galleries provide a substantial exhibition space for the museum's African collection, comprising over 200,000 objects. This curatorial scope encompasses both archaeological and contemporary objects, including both unique masterpieces from artistry and objects of everyday life. A great addition was material amassed by Sir Henry Wellcome, which was donated by the Wellcome History Medical Museum in 1954. Highlights of the African collection include the Benin and Iboku bronze sculptures, the beautiful bronze head of Queen Edia, a dozen exquisite Afro-Portuguese ivories, Asante gold rock from Ghana, the rare Akin drum also from Ghana, a series of soapstone figures from the Kisi people in Sierra Leone and Liberia, the toilet collection of Central African sculptures, textiles, weaponry, important material from Ethiopia, the unique Lozira head from Uganda, excavated objects from Great Zimbabwe, a red, evening, a red divining bowl from the vendor people and cave paintings and petroglyphs from South Africa. Now let's talk about the Benin bronzes. Before I go on, I'd like to make a distinction between Benin and Benin. Now Benin is a 
country in West Africa. Well, Benin is a town in Nigeria, in Edo State, Nigeria. So now these bronzes were seized by a British force in the Benin expedition of 1897 and given to the British Foreign Office. Around 200 of the bronzes were passed on to the British Museum, while the remainder was divided among a variety of collections, with the majority being purchased by Felix von Luschkan on behalf of the Koniglicius Museum for Volkerkunde, which means Royal Museum of Ethnology in Berlin. In 1936, Oba Kenzwa II of Benin in Nigeria began the movement to return the corpus of objects now known in modern discourse as the Benin Bronzes. It's no surprise that various artists have drawn inspiration from African art. From its beauty to its uniqueness to its elaborate details, African art is truly captivating. Now, during the early 1900s, the aesthetics of traditional African sculpture became a powerful influence among European artists who formed an avant-garde in the development of modern art. In France, Henri Matisse, Pablo Picasso and their school of Paris friends blended the highly stylized treatment of the human figure in African sculptures with painting styles derived from post-impressionist works. The resulting pictorial flatness vivid color palette and fragmented cubist shapes helped to define early modernism. While these artists knew nothing of the original meaning and function of the West and Central African sculptures they encountered, they instantly recognized the spiritual aspect of the composition and adapted these qualities to their own efforts to move beyond the naturalism that had defined Western art since the Renaissance. Picasso's African period lasted from 1907 to 1909. African art has made a lot of contributions to modern art with its use of vibrant colors and very distinct qualities. African art is truly unique. I hope you found this interesting and informative. Please give us a thumbs up, share this video with your contacts and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching.